Hello everyone. In this short video we're going to go through the basics of super elevation in Civil 3D. So this will be part one in the series. In future videos we'll dive down into the details of the different parameters of super elevation. Let's get started. So what is required to calculate super elevation in Civil 3D? Well a horizontal alignment at minimum. And you can see we have that here. And I can select it here. You can see my simple horizontal alignment with one curve no spirals. So before I start calculating I'm going to need to set a design speed. The super elevation cannot calculate without this. So with the alignment selected I'm going to alignment properties. On the design criteria tab I'm going to set a design speed. Notice if I had multiple curves I could set multiple design speeds per curve. I'm going to turn on criteria based design and this is where I select my super elevation standards or my lookup table. I'm going to choose the 2004 and in future videos we'll dive deeper into this file. But this is basically what's going to look up my super elevation transition lengths for the minimum radius that it selects. Now my criteria here is which basically I'm telling it what is my max super elevation rate I want to consider for the minimum radius lookup. And that's going to be 6% in this case. It's a two-lane road and I'm going to do crown roadway, so I hit OK. Now we're ready to calculate super. To do that, the alignment is still selected. I can go here, super elevation, calculate, edit. So I'm going to say yes, calculate now. It's just a simple two-lane road we're going to do here, pivot in the middle. Leave that to center baseline. 12%, 2%, that is my geometry here in this case I'm going to use. I'm going to turn off shoulders. We'll get back to this later. I don't have shoulders yet. And then for attainment, you see this is the settings that I've already set in the alignment. And one setting I will talk about is the percentage on tangent. So in other words, how much of the super elevation transition would I like to occur on the tangent versus the curve. And I'm going to do two thirds on the tangent. And one of the nice options is this automatically resolve. We don't need it here, but if you have curves that are close together, you can turn this on and it will resolve the overlap between the transitions of super elevation. Let's finish. And when I finish I can see what rates were calculated. So for right outside lane, because I said two lane roads, so I'm just going to get right outside lane. I come up to a super of 5.6% on the curve. That's my full super rate. Okay, so I can hit the checkbox here. Notice I could edit. I can make changes here and they are dynamic. So now I need to test this, I need a corridor and I actually already have that. I use this particular assembly and I open the tool palette here. If I go to lanes, all I placed is this lane super elevation AOR on both sides. That's what I placed here. Just want to show you that. And I created a corridor. You can see the corridor in the file. So let's take a look at the section. So I'm going to click on the corridor and I'm going to go to Section Editor. And I'm going to click this Station Selector. Click in Plan View and go to the middle or near the middle of the curve. You can see I have no super elevation. So why is that? Well, we've missed one of our other requirements. So we have to have super elevation calced on the alignment, but we also need a assembly that can accept super elevation number one and then number two it has to be activated. So let's take a look at our assembly. I'm just going to click on the assembly marker and I'm going to go to assembly properties. Under the construction tab you can see on my right lane subassembly that use super elevation is a, there is a super elevation option but it is turned off. So here is where I have to assign. Remember we had right lane outside, left lane outside. So I have to tell it, okay, for the right side, use right lane outside that I just calculated. So that'll move up to that 5.6% full super. Same thing on left side, I'm going to go use super, pick left lane outside. Perfect. And now if I go to my corridor, rebuild my corridor, and I'll set it to rebuild automatic. And if I look at the same section, You can see the 5.6% full super rate there in the middle of the curve. 
So I had to calc the super. To calc the super, I needed my alignment properties to be set with the design criteria and select which super elevation table to look at. So I had that set. And then I had to turn super on within the assembly. But keep in mind, I'm going to go up to basic here instead of lanes. We have the basic lane that uh, this is a very useful subassembly, but I'm going to go to the help property. Remember I said we have to have support of super in the assembly or the subassembly. Notice here, basic lane has no parameter for super elevation. So this can never be super elevated, this particular one. And that's what's nice about the help files, whether it's a lane or a shoulder, a median. We'll go to shoulders, for example. Shoulder vertical subbase, I've got a help file. It will always tell us, can it participate in super elevation, which this shoulder can here. Notice it says. And then it tells us which super elevations you can tie to. So this particular one can use super elevations, and it's going to tie to the shoulder super elevations when I activate the shoulder rollover area in the wizard, which we'll, we'll get to in a future video. So I hope this has been beneficial. Stay tuned for part two in the series of super elevation and civil 3D.